Hello and welcome to the Kimono Spark Highlight Show. This week we'll recap select races from Saturday, February 25, as well as Sunday, February 26. The two-day race carnival saw a total of 21 races being contested. Saturday's feature race on the race card, dubbed Champions Day, was the Miracle Man Cup, while the main event on Sunday was the Lloyd Lindbergh, Lindy de la Pena Memorial Trophy. Let's begin our recap of this weekend's racing, beginning with race 1 from Saturday. This was a restricted allowance event for native red 4-year-olds and up, going a distance of 1,000 meters round. Dennis Price's entry, Unruly Dude, the mount of Radish Roman, was a 1-2 favorite. Yield in line for the first of 10 thereafter. Give me the light, a shade tardy at the start with Wabtastic, gracefully made. As expected, has dashed into an early lead and shows her usual speed. Storm come is chasing a length and a half back as they arrive at the half mile and go running into that turn. Wabtastic picking up on the outside. In behind them, that's on a ruly dude, four or five lengths off that lead. Katura races up next, ahead of Code of Conduct and the grey give me the light at the back of the field. They've run past the three eights. They're arriving at the final five sixteenth, and it is a gracefully made and awesome Anthony Thomas attempting to go all the way. Stormer come now asked to blow strong against the rail. Well, Tastic is on the outside, but this gracefully made continues to dash inside the final three sixteenth. Stormer come now trying to make a strong challenge. Here is on a ruly dude now put to the left hand stick, but gracefully made continues to fight them off on a ruly dude and Radish Roman now becoming a threat on the outside, but. Gracefully made continues to dig deep into a reservoir and gracefully made will get there to win it on the awesome Anthony. Stormer come made just a beat on Ruli Dude for second. Katura is fourth. Gracefully made running with blinkers on gives Alfred Brown the first win on the card at odds of two to one, clocking one minute, one and three fifths of a second over the five furlong strip. The day's fourth event was another restricted allowance contest for native bred four year olds and up. A quick sprint over 1,000 meters. Field in line. They're off. Champion Bobler comes away in behind Loxall in the center. Nearest to us, power ranking in the orange cap. KP Choice is in between those. As they come racing the first furlong. Thalas not too far away in the green, more toward the center of the racetrack. In behind them, Freedom Street. Champion Bubbler with running to do. And Slammer at the moment needs to find a lot more as they come away now inside the final two and a half furlongs. A Luxol. Just the leader, it appears. Thalas pressing all the time, maybe a length down as they slip past the quarter pole. And Luxol now under a vigorous ride, drifting a bit to the left. Thalas continues to drift to the far side and under the stand fence. That's power ranking in with a rail shot as Luxol continues to hold the lead. It's Luxol getting cracks at that right hand stick from Action Pack, Rayon Lewis, and Luxol is away from them. Champion Bubbler coming on late. Luxol will take the Jason Da Costa by maybe three lengths over Champion Bubbler. Then power ranking on the far side. That's a Freedom Street finishing in fourth. Luxal with Ryan Lewis aboard wins the Jason Acosta for the 2022 champion trainer. Beating champion Bobla, power ranking and Freedom Street. Saturday's sixth event saw a field of eight competing over 1,200 meters or six furlongs. Gary Griffith's entry Regal and Royal was the most favored among punters, sent off at four to five. Fine. For the Mojito. 1200 meters. The six furlongs thereof. Fair start with Prosecco just tailing off a bit in the early exchanges as Magical Mood goes for that lead with a little grovy thing on the attack on the rail. Curlin's flight a length and a half back in the green in third. Regal and Roll in the yellow races on the outside of the grey snowflakes. Five lengths separates them. A Vanquisher races up next, racing out wide of on the rail in the red. That's Ian Zelinks, JJ the striker, now beginning to make some progress and a long, long way last to Prosecco. They come away toward the final three, and it's magical mood out in front from Regal and Royal. Curlin's flight slotted in between them. Little groovy thing fading back. Snowflakes now asked to run on. JJ the striker and Vanquish are run together. Ian Zalinx is next, and Prosecco remains in another county at the back. But magical mood brings them into the lane. A quarter of a mile to run. Here now is a Regal and Royal on the outside. Curlin's flight not too far away to land a blow, but magical mood maintains the advantage. And now both riders call for the stick. Magical mood 
put under the right hand stick regal and royal put to the left hand stick but it's magical mood and o'neill mullings by two lengths inside the final 16th can they stop magical mood magical mood driven out to the max to win it over regal and royal then he ends the links vanquisher curlin's flight is fifth under the competent handling of jockey O'Neill Mullings, Magical Mood clocked 1 minute and 15 seconds flat over the distance. Regal and Royal, Ian's Lynx, Vanquisher and Curling's Flight were the top 5 finishers. Saturday's 7th event was the day's feature. This was the Miracle Man Cup, a graded stakes open allowance race for 3 years old and upwards. Jason DaCosta had 3 entries in the talented field of 6. 1900 meters they're off coming off a bit slow that was a positive id as lure of lucy shows her speed grabs that lead king arthur chasing with calculus on the outside sweet majesty racing just in behind them on the rail that's miniature man and abigail abel and last of all it's a positive id will have to do running late as they leave the clubhouse turn and the mile behind them out in front, Lure of Lucy striding out powerfully, leads up by just a length and a quarter. Calculus stalking in second. King Arthur is held together as they lead the seven in third. Sweet Majesty further back and running in fourth, then Miniature Man, and last of all, the slow starting positive ID. They come away now, leaving the six furlong point on the course, and Lure of Lucy maintains that lead, just a length in front of Calculus edging closer. King Arthur also making progress. Sweet Majesty is right there, close enough if good enough, as just about four lengths separates the first four. A break opens up to Miniature Man, caught now by positive ID on the move. Lure of Lucy races toward the half mile, still out in front from Calculus now pulling down to within three parts of a length. King Arthur is in a handy spot in third, a break back to Sweet Majesty. Making progress now, Miniature Man kicked by Abigail Abel and positive ID now asked to run, leaving Sweet Majesty at the back three-eighths of a mile to run in the Miracle Man Cup and they come away now toward the final 5 16th and Calculus has now taken charge King Arthur bearing down on the outside to challenge Lure of Lucy has faded back in third but they run inside the final quarter and it is Calculus and Robert Halladine who have the advantage King Arthur trying to close the gap on the outside he's close enough and if good enough they run toward the final furlong and Calculus shaken up by Halladine continues to deny King Arthur who is just a lengthen the piece back and switch to the inside Calculus holds Holding the lead in the Miracle Man Cup. They run toward the line and it's Calculus and Robert Hallidine. They take the Miracle Man Cup by more than two lengths. King Arthur is second. Positive ID running on after a slow start is third. The Gary Sobranti conditioned Calculus takes the Miracle Man Cup. Fending off rivals King Arthur, Positive ID and Lure of Lucy who ran in fourth. Our final race recap from Saturday was the curtain closer. An optional claiming event, Junior Panton's entry as a soup was a late non-starter, leaving 11 entries to compete over 1,100 meters. They're off. XY Soul buzzer saw the slowest to get off. Solid approach races on the rail overtaken by a just an illusion. Ultimatum is right there in the thick of things. Strikingly gorgeous has made good progress. Triple Seven is racing in behind them as they dart away, leaving the half mile and run toward the three. Wifey says so, making some progress, just about six lengths off that lead. XY Soul races just in front of Bowl Sammy, urged already as they arrive at the three. Buzz Assault and Vampire Rejection race next, and Kaya at the back, outsped. And looking hopeless, they leave the 5 16th. They're coming into the lane. Just an illusion in the orange silk. Strikingly gorgeous on the outside. Now launching a charge. And strikingly gorgeous has now snatched that lead from just an illusion. But the fight continues. Solid approach is over on the rail. Between horses, ultimatum and a wife. He says so. XY soul coming out wide. But just an illusion kicks again. Here is solid approach now. Beginning to close the gap on the rail. It's a just an illusion. Solid approach coming at them with Chris Mamdine. And toward the outside, it's XY soul but solid approach got the first run and beats xy soul bold sammy is third just an illusion fourth vampire rejection is fifth a well-timed ride by christopher mamdine aboard the colin ferguson conditioned solid approach saw him getting the better of xy soul by three quarters of a length passing the post in a time of one minute ten and two fifths of a second it's now time for a break on the kimana spark highlight show 
On the other side, we'll recap selected races on the card from Sunday, February 26, including the day's feature, the Lloyd Lindbergh Lindy de la Pena Memorial Trophy. Welcome back to the Kimana Park Highlight Show. In the second half of our presentation, we'll recap selected races from Sunday, February 26. Let's begin with race number 5. This was a restricted maiden condition event for 4 years old and up. A quick sprint over a short distance of 900 meters. A field of 10 reduced to 9 with King Rick, a late non-starter. 900 meters straight there off. First start potential though, missed the start. On the far side, without remorse, is a running quickly in the early exchanges. English Anne is nearest to us. Also near the stand fence in the, the red sleeves, that's a caveman money boy just in behind them. As without remorse, is way over on the far side and right up with that lead. Wildfire is also showing speed along with caveman. English Anne is nearest to us as they sort themselves out and uh, make their way now racing up toward the final 316. On the far side, without remorse, looks to have the overall lead. Wildfire chasing with a caveman and English Anne. So Ragbar Bappi asked to come on, but possibly for a placing as without remorse continues to lead. Wildfire now coming at r without remorse. Remor remorse is being driven flat to the boards. Wildfire flying in the end, but without remorse wins it over Wildfire. Then caveman close. Between on the far side, Sir Ragbar Bappi and English Anne. Andre Martin gets without remorse to quicken just over the short distance to register his first win on the day. Running an impressive time of 56 and one fifth of a second, beating Wildfire by three quarters of a length. The next event we'll recap from Sunday will be race seven. The seven horse anonymous conditioned by the horse whisperer Gary Sobrati was a one to two favorite. They're off. Roulette boss and she's my hedge fund, the slowest to get away. Piggly Wiggly wiggles into an early lead. Chased up by Juracell in the white cap, big guy in the sky is chasing them from third as they make their way toward the six. A break back to the favorite Anonymous, Bossy racing just in behind. The pair of Roulette boss and she's my hedge fund share lasts. They've left the six, they're approaching the five on the back stretch, and Piggly Wiggly continues to lead from stablemate Duracell. A break back to a big guy in the sky. Anonymous now let loose and asked to close and begins to do so. Bossy is some three lengths further back. Roulette Boss now beginning to be urged and asked to get closer. And way at the back, it's She's My Hedge Fund looking hopeless at the moment. The half mile behind them, they're arriving at the 7.16th and Duracell now moves through, gets that lead. Anonymous in chase in second, needing to find two and a quarter lengths. Piggly Wiggly has faded back. There goes on the outside, big guy in the sky. Bosi also making mild progress with on the rail in the green. That's a roulette boss. Forget she's my hedge fund. They're coming into the lane. They're about to arrive at the top of it with a quarter of a mile to run, and it is Duracell. And Samantha Fletcher, she's busy as they arrive at the 316th. Here is Anonymous now launching an attack, needing to find two or more lengths. Roulette boss creeping closer all the while, but they flash past the furlong pole, and it is Duracell continuing to lead. Here is Roulette boss and Paul Francis on the rail. Duracell running out of energy. Roulette boss snatches the lead, and Roulette boss and Paul Francis take it from Duracell. Then Anonymous. Close. Could be Bosi over Big Guy in the Sky. A well-executed ride by the jockey Paul Francis aboard the Dennis Tweed train, Roulette Boss, Duracell, Anonymous and Bosi was your top four finishers. Race 8 was a non-restricted maiden condition event for native bred, three years old fillies only. Michael Thomas's entry, Acknowledge Me, the mount of champion apprentice Yuval Pinnock, was a two-to-one favorite for the trip going 1,100 meters. You're ready for a start. Best of luck if you play the late pick four. They're off and racing. Lion Charmer make that uh, fearless Reina and uh, Bella Soul. 
left at the back of the field earlier. They passed the five, and it is making the runnings. Digital light right against the rail. She's a mirage rushing around, and she's a mirage now goes to from digital light. Acknowledge me right there too. Lion Charmer as they pass the four. Then comes the love of God, and overtaking the love of God, that is a Bella Soul. Then comes Fearless Rainer, the bee's knees, and wow, how just at the back of the field. They pass the three and cup towards the two and a half for a long point, and it is she's a mirage in front and traveling nicely. About three lengths in front of Acknowledge Me, cutting the corner. Digital Light is right there too. Then comes Lion Charmer, but it is she's a mirage still in front. Here comes Acknowledge Me, creeping up against the rail. It's she's a mirage in front of Acknowledge Me, coming pestily on the inside and acknowledge me now it's the front she's a mirage is right there too they're still fighting for it she's a mirage and acknowledge me acknowledge me getting the upper hand from she's a mirage not quitting acknowledge me in front of she's a mirage acknowledge me beat she's a mirage then come digital light the love of god is a fourth and uh, bella soul fifth the favorite acknowledge me hogs the rail and powers past the post for the win in one minute eight and three fifths of a second She's a Mirage at odds of 40 to 1, was second. Digital Light finished in front of the Love of God who completed the top four. The day's 10th and final recap race for Sunday was the highly anticipated feature. This was an overnight allowance event for three years old and up, going a mile or 1600 meters. Named in honor of the veteran sportscaster, Lloyd Lindbergh, Lindy Della Pena. For the Lloyd Lindbergh, Lindy Della Pena. Memorial Trophy, they're off. Fair start. Money Monster, got a good one. So to Runaway Algo and his expected Runaway Algo runs to the lead as they leave the seven. Crimson is very early, chasing in second. Money Monster toward the outside. They run away now toward the final six. Press conference tucked in between horses. Unruly boss making ground on the rail. Helicopter and Marquesas race next. And Classical Orb in the green at the back. They run toward the final five eights in the Lindy Della Pena and Runaway Algo rated on that lead strides out by just over a length, leaving the five. Crimson and press conference in close attendance. There goes Money Monster and Ruli Boss, only four and a half to five off that lead. Helicopter is back there, just in front of Marquesas, and Classical Orb races at the back. They run toward the seven sixteenth of Runaway Algo, attempts to go all the way and looks strong at the moment. Money Monster in chase. Press conference and a crimson race as a team. They leave the three. Unruly boss in behind them. Marquesas now under a drive. So two helicopter and a classical orb at the back of the field. They're about to come into the lane and run away. Algo has run away from them at the top of it, opening up some six or more lengths. Money Monster, the best of the rest. Press conference in the orange cap on the rail toward the outside on a ruly boss. But a runaway Algo still under a hand rider. Smooth one, two, and now the rider changes the hold. And it is a runaway Algo. Algo out in front on the Linton Stedman, beginning to streak off. Runaway Algo will win and win impressively in the Lloyd Lindbergh Lindy Della Pena Trophy. Money Monster is second, Crimson is third, Unruly Boss fourth. Dale Murphy's one to five favorite Runaway Algo ran away with the day's feature, outclassing the field with a commanding 14 length victory over Money Monster, who came in second. Crimson, third, and Unruly Boss settling for fourth position. As we recap another exciting weekend of racing, it was highlighted by Calculus's victory in the Miracle Man Cup on Saturday and Runaway Algo's impressive win in the Lloyd Lindbergh Lindy Delapena Memorial Trophy on Sunday. This has been another edition of the Kimana Spark Highlight Show. I'll see you next time.